everybody. Um, thanks for joining me. I am just setting up Instagram in case you're watching on Instagram so everybody can see me. Checking connection. I'm also live here. Is everybody here? Hey, I see people. How's everybody doing? I'm just uh, getting my cello out and getting ready for this live stream. I feel like I haven't really done much live streaming on YouTube, so this is good. Um, now, if you can see this, please let me know because um, I'm using like a new program. Oh, hey, everybody on Instagram. I'm live streaming on Instagram and YouTube. So for those of you who are on Instagram, you can also head to YouTube either way. I'll be here for next at least half an hour to 45 minutes and answering all your cello questions. And also wanted to make a big announcement to share with you guys. So now I'm just right now checking to make sure that everything is working correctly. It appears to be working correctly. I see 10 of you on YouTube. I see another 10 on Instagram. Can you guys all hear me okay? Okay, so excellent. Um, excited to see you live. Cello workshop online, oh, thank you. Okay, so let's see. Ooh, it's really hot here in New York. Let me just move this over a little bit so that you guys can see me okay. Okay, let's not mess anything up now. Okay, how about this? Is that better? Um, and how's the audio? Hello, eventually, somebody says. How's the audio on, um, on YouTube? It's, it's, it's all right because I'm using my new microphone. Just to make sure it's not too loud or too soft. Let me know. Drop a comment. So for those of you who are joining me right now, the first thing I would need you to do is let me know who you are, your name, where you're from, uh, which country, which city, and also, um, so your name, where you're from, and also, uh, well, I'm assuming that you play the cello. So let me know what level of playing you are. Are you advanced beginner, intermediate, um, advanced? Okay, so three things. Your name, where you're from, and what level of playing you are at. Okay? And then, uh, while you're doing that, I'm just going to share a little bit about me in case you don't, you're, you're, you're not um, familiar with me. I'm a cellist. And, oh, from Iran. That's so cool. Hi. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm a cellist, obviously, duh. <laughs> I am in New York City right now. I was uh, born and born in Hong Kong and actually raised in Boston, Massachusetts. And I came to the United States when I was 12 years old. I came to study music, study the cello. So I did my studies undergraduate at the New England Conservatory of Music in Boston. And also um, then I moved to New York. Um, to do my master's and artist diploma at the Juilliard School. And since I graduated from Juilliard, I have been a teaching artist at the New York Philharmonic for the past 18 years. And so I've done a lot of teaching and um, uh, in classrooms specifically, I've also been uh, the director, artistic director um, of this ensemble called Classical Jam, in which we've toured for the past 10 years all over, really, the United States and also in the world. And the premise, the idea of Classical Jam is about education through interactive concerts. Um, and it's about bringing different types of music, well, all classical music, but a little bit of sometimes, you know, genre bending music but all under the umbrella of classical music and we create these interactive concerts and we bring them to different people, uh, different audiences and it really is sort of an arts advocacy and arts and education passion of mine because I really believe that music should be shared. And that brings me to now and why I am doing YouTube here and doing um, music. The reason why I'm here is because I really believe in the power of music the power of education, the power of the internet. You know, 
the internet really gives you the opportunity to reach anyone in the world. So because of putting uh, YouTube videos, I now have connected with cello students from all over the world, uh, some from China, um, all over the United States, one from Ireland, a couple from Australia, Hong Kong, uh, what else? Um, many different places. So it's been really wonderful getting to know all of you. So I'm really, really excited um, to basically, you know, do this online YouTube thing and to kind of share the love of classical music and cello. Um, I think that if you create that opportunity, people, you know, really respond, you know, because I think a lot of people actually don't know about the cello or classical music. Wow, Slovenia, that's awesome. And a lot of people don't know about classical music or the cello. And I feel like now, you know, because especially of the pandemic, um, live concerts are not available and a lot of students don't have access to quality teaching. And so this is an opportunity for me, for me to connect with many of you online. So it's been really fulfilling for me as an artist, as a musician, to be able to share my passion online um, because I'm not really able to do that through uh, in, like in-person interactions because of the pandemic. So, and it's actually a great opportunity because like I said, I'm like able to get to know all of you. Like for example, I see someone here from Indonesia, Delvi, welcome, thank you. Um, somebody from North California. Okay, so Natalie, the giant violin. <laughs> yeah, this is actually the cello. So we call it the cello. Some people call it the giant violin, that's fine too. So now, let's, uh, th a little bit about me, and I, at the end of this, um, or later on in this q and I am announcing a very exciting opportunity, and it's another way for me to really connect even more deeply with many of you cellists. So make sure you stay tuned until the end of this so that I can share with you this, uh, this exciting news. But meanwhile, do you guys have any questions for me? Let's do our Q&A. Let's see, I'm gonna go on to Instagram to see if anyone has any specific questions. Uh, Hannah from Germany, not sure about my level. I switched from violin 13 years to cello. Awesome, intermediate level, all right. Uh, someone from Brazil, uh, am I saying your name right? Dombia, Dombia? I'm, I'm by the way on Instagram also, uh, and my handle is cellist Wendy Law, in case you wanna find me there as well. Let's see. Um, from Brazil, awesome. Self-taught, intermediate, wonderful. From Argentina, awesome. I've been to Argentina, beginner with the cello. Thank you so much for your kind words. Virginia Beach, advanced high school. Want to study in the conservatory after I graduate next year, wonderful. Kansas City, Missouri, all right. Brazil, wonderful. Turkey, hey Aria, nice to see you here. Um, wonderful, let's see. Um, okay, so excellent. So Costa Rica, wow, this is really from all over the world. I'm so honored that you're all here to join me. This is awesome. So why don't we do this? Um, I would love to see some specific cello questions. And you guys, each of you who are watching right now, think of a specific uh, question and um, and before I do that, I mean, before I answer your questions, why don't I play you a piece, okay? So I'm gonna actually move back because I don't want the microphone to be too close. It may sound bad that way, so. Let me just tune. Isn't it great when this is live? You get to see me or anyone on the internet. now global exactly so let me play some some music for you it's still kind of out here so everybody while i'm playing music please write your question okay it's getting really hot in new york my goodness and i had to close the window because i don't want all the noise and stuff let's see what should i play for you
you go, a little box for you. Didn't mean to play it, it's just something got inspired. I'm like, I have the cello here, why not play a little something for you? All right, so now, I hope that you guys have uh, put in all your questions. Let's start with some of the YouTube questions. Okay, Natalie says, what's the greatest piece of advice you have received over playing as a profession and how do you deal with burnout? Okay, so you have two questions there, Natalie. Um, the first answer to your question about um, my greatest piece of advice, actually I talked about this in my uh, recent Instagram post and um, it was given to me by uh, David Sawyer from the Granary String Quartet. I was at the Marvel Music Festival. Some of you may know of this festival. It's, it's a, um, a very prestigious festival with a lot of fantastic first-class musicians. So I was lucky to be there for three summers. And um, David Sawyer was one of the senior um, artists there. And, and this was quite a few years ago. He's not alive anymore, but he has an incredible incredible sound. David Sawyer is known for his beautiful round big sound and one day I just went up to him and I'm like Mr. Sawyer what is it that you do to create such a beautiful round and amazing sound? What is it? How do you do that? And he gave me a piece of advice that was so life-changing for me. It was truly life-changing because it changed how I think about music. It changed how I think about life. Um, it because it applies to life as well. Anyway, so t he answered my question, which was how do you create such a beautiful round sound? And he says, I hear it in my head first. I imagine how it sounds like, and then I create it. Okay, that sounds like a very simple answer to a question, because that's really, literally all he said. But it's so incredibly life-changing because the idea is about creating what you desire in terms of your cello sound in your head first, which means you have to hear it in your head, you have to know what you want, what you want to sound like, and uh, how you want to basically create that. So, you're, 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 so everything comes from your mind first, right? So if you can imagine whatever it is that you want, with the cello, then your body will follow through and creating the necessary conditions, necessary technique to create that sound outwards. So that's also a very important thing to have in life because, you know, a lot of times we have goals about what we want to do as musicians, cellists, you know, just as people. But if you can't imagine what it is that you want, you cannot create that outcome. So always imagine the outcome, imagine the end game, um, and then and then you follow through with that imagination. So that's very, very life changing. And I think the second part of the question is, uh, where's the question? Where did it go? The second part of the question is, oh, how do you deal with burnout? Well, okay, so yes, that's a really good question. I try not to burn out. I try not to practice too many hours work too many hours I need to you need, you need to have a balance in life practice work sleep um, having time for your family and friends relationships uh, so you really have to have everything balanced and set a schedule for myself especially during this time of lockdown which I'm, I'm again I'm in New York City so you know New York City it, we've been through some really tough times and I've literally was in my apartment for like two months straight without going outside. Maybe like once or twice just to get groceries for my friends and family. But otherwise, really tough. And so I had to really be strict and make a schedule so that I could, you know, have time to relax, have time to learn and do what I need to do to learn, to grow, to practice, to create YouTube content and Instagram content with you guys so that I can um, connect, you know, with different people and co co and continue to do what I really am passionate about, which is sharing music, sharing cello, and sharing the passion of playing the cello and how to do it. So that's really my passion. Great question. Thank you. Uh, okay, so do you have any specific exercises you can do to train to play the cello? Any specific exercises? Well, you know, it's like learning anything else. 
about the cello is not like you can just learn one set of exercises and all of a sudden you're really great. It's a process. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes dedication. It takes consistency. So I would say, you know, being consistent with your practicing, being consistent with your work, and um, and all. I mean, yes, there are certain exercises. For example, like I always do a certain amount of warm ups. Um, I would do a certain amount of scales, arpeggios, bow exercises. Like I did a video on bow exercises. Uh, left hand exercises. Um, sometimes I practice without the instrument. Sometimes I study a score. So it's like a series of different things that you do to really progress as a cellist. So it's not one thing, you know. Okay, let's see. Okay, cello workshop online. How do you make better and more variety of colors in the cello? Also, how do you manage your schedule during this time? How to make better and more variety of colors in cello? Well, that's a good cello question. So I'm going to move back here to show you how to create colors. There are multiple ways to create colors. You need to use your left hand and your right hand to create different colors. Um, let's talk about the right hand first. Um, okay, in order to create sound, you need a combination of weight, pressure, weight or pressure. I like to say weight because I never want to actually pressure the cello, right? Because that's not really productive. I'm going to step back some more so you two can see me here. Um, and so it's a, a combination of pressure and also bow speed. How fast and how slow do you play the bow? So, and then also you cr can create different uh, colors by where you are on the bow, high up here low here so it's like three different combinations and then not to mention left hand of course vibrato how wide how narrow how fast and how slow your vibrato is so you know if you want to create a sound again going back to what David Sawyer says you know is about having that sound in your head and then your job as a cellist is to really experiment with different tone colors, different ways to create the sound that you have in your head. So let's use an example. Um, let's say the beginning of the Dvorak cello concerto slow movement, okay? I have a very specific sound I wanna create there. Um, I want it to be resonant. I want it to be beautiful round, singing sound. Uh, I don't want it to be too loud, but but also like big and round enough so that it has the projection that it needs to cut across the orchestra to the end of the row in the symphony hall, in the hall. So I know that I want it to imitate the human voice, so I'm gonna have a certain amount of vibrato here. But I don't want it too fast, otherwise it sounds crazy. If you guys watched my recent video on um, how to play the swan, I talked a lot about the vibrato. Now, I don't want too much pressure because I want that ring in the sound so that the ring keeps going and going. So with all that in mind, I'm thinking this kind of pressure and I play with the sound. I keep playing with the sound until I'm happy with it and the vibrato too. So that's a pretty good sound. So then I go... the color I want. So I don't want it too close to the bridge, that's going to sound like this, right? Not too um, close to the fingerboard because that's just going to sound too fluffy. It needs to have that weight, weighty sound, has a core to sound, which is also very important. So, you know, a lot of different things, a lot of different factors to create the sound that you want. I hope that answers the question. Um, from Malaysia, awesome. Okay, let's see what's going on here on Instagram with the questions. When you travel with the cello, you have to buy second tickets for the cello. How will this change after COVID-19? And doesn't that get expensive and make you want to switch to the violin? <laughs> okay, that's a really good question. It's probably too late for me to switch to the violin at this point. I am committed to playing the cello. I've been playing for many, many years already. So, um, it is always tricky. Uh, I did make a video about traveling with the cello and some of the disaster 
situations that I've been through along with other musicians, which can be very difficult, you know? But, um, yes, um, I don't know how it's going to change exactly after COVID-19, but how it has been in the past, um, there always has to be an extra seat for the cello because my instrument is very valuable. It's over 200 years old. I definitely cannot throw it to luggage. That will definitely damage the cello. It's also very, very um, old and valuable. So, you know, you don't want to mess it up when you're traveling, right, performing. So I definitely want to buy a ticket and it does get expensive, but you know, it's part of the budget. So when a presenter, um, a venue hires me, they, you know, the budget that we agree on always include the cello seat as part of the equation. So people just have to come up with a budget when they want to hire a good cellist. That's just part of it. And a lot of times when I travel with an ensemble, all of us would split the cost of the cello ticket. So hope that answers your question. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay, let's see what else here. Can you play Piatti for Capri 6? Yes, I, I probably can't do it right at this second, but um, I've done all the Piatti's growing up. That's really, you know, part of the, part of being a cellist. You know, you do your Piatti Caprices, you do your Popper Etudes, so yes. Uh, talk about Hein and C third movement, okay. So yeah, so repertoire specific things, I probably can't go into detail right now, but Heinze is, um, is one of my favorite concertos, to be honest with you. And the third movement is very challenging, has a lot of fast notes and a lot of technical things. And um, the thing about it is just practicing slow. Uh, practice slow, practice with rhythms, and uh, and practice with the tuner so that it's in tune. But, you know, I can almost say that about every piece. But that piece specifically, you know, with any sort of fast passages, just always use rhythm. That's always so helpful. Uh, let's see. Do you have any tips? This is Hannah. For practicing vibrato in the thumb position. Ooh, good question. I don't think anyone has ever asked me that. So how do you do vibrato on the thumb position? Okay, it's really not so different from any other positions per se, but on the thumb, it's a little trickier because you have to vibrate uh, in a different way. So I would say just practice very slow, practice scales and listen, because you know how it sounds like when you vibrate here, right? In the lower positions. That's how it sounds like. So when you go up, you want it to match. Just, just make sure that it match. And also, um, when I go to thumb position, I like to think of my hand, if you can all see. The hand is like, um, it has a certain form. So not to be tense, but it has to have a certain form. It can't be collapsed. When you collapse like this, then you don't give the, your left hand strength to, to be down. So you don't need to press down per se. You don't need to go up like this to press down, but it needs to have certain amount of weight. And that weight helps with anchoring your thumb position and also your vibrato and thumb position. Yeah, great question. Okay, let's do another Instagram question. Uh, okay, so Bethany says that she needs to pick a cello concerto for college auditions soon, and she's asking what's a good concerto to do. That's a good question. Um, I would say what you're most comfortable, well, two things. The most important thing is what you're most comfortable with and also what you play really well and really familiar and like you know that you sound good on. That's the most important thing, right? And then the other thing is I suggest um, something that it's not too slow. Um, for example, well, I mean like don't do like the slow movement of Dvorak to start your college auditions because the thing is with auditions, you only have a certain amount of time 
So you can't really spend like half, an, you know, the first two minutes playing or, or, you know, usually they give you what few minutes, right? Per thing that you have to play. So basically you have to show everything that you are as a musician, as a cellist in a very short amount of time. That's the point I'm trying to make. So if you play something slow, you're not comfortable with, and it doesn't really show who you are as an artist and as a musician, then it's harder for you to win the audition because the idea is to be really good in a short amount of time and show everything you can. So I would say, but don't try to like pick something really fast just for the sake of playing fast or, you know, play something that you're most comfortable with. So that's, that's what's important. All right, let's go back to some questions here on YouTube. Okay, uh, Claudia. Uh, Claudia, I know your name. You're from Kenya, right? Any advice on how to ease tension before playing? Oh, before playing? What do you mean by before playing? Like before you practice or or during? What, what do you mean by before? But for me, actually, that's something that I've worked on like my entire life. The cello is a big instrument. I am short. I'm 5'2". And you want to produce the maximum amount of sound with a minimum effort. So the thing that is gonna help you are two things. One, your own body's weight. Two, is to work with gravity. AKA, don't try to force you know, more sound by pressing down more. You think that's gonna produce more sound and make everything louder? It's the opposite. You actually have to stand up, stand up or sit up really, really tall and put all your weight into the cello. Now, that does not mean, when I say this, it does not mean that you collapse, okay? So it means that you have to have a certain form. The form holds up the weight and the weight goes all the way into the cello. So that way you really feel this weightiness. And then, um, and that also, to answer your question, helps with the tension because what creates tension is when everything is up and that's very easy, you know, is have everything up like this and that's what's giving you tension. And as we know, the, ch uh, the your body is connected. So when you have something up here, then this goes up and then everything else is up. So everything has to be just grounded and down. And the other thing that would really help in terms of tension is your breathing. So you really need to, before you start, breathe, check in with your shoulders, with your back, your lower back, your arms, make sure everything's nice and relaxed and that you're feeling grounded, right? And that you're pulling everything down and then you play out. <laughs> you play, okay? So that's one way to think about it, um, but it, it takes a lot of awareness and self-awareness. Okay. Um, um, okay, so Kevin. Kevin, hey Wendy, my question is, when I normally practice, I play through the whole piece and not get any progress. Uh, like, I, like, of course, I know which spots need work, but how do I practice a section efficiently? A really good question. Um, yes, playing through a piece, of course, is important. Um, what I usually do is I, I, well, not every day, but sometimes I just wanna know like where, I'm, where I am with the piece. I may play through it once and then I work on spots. Spots first, before sections. So there's some trouble spots, you know, that you always sound messy and it's just not really good in certain parts. So you just wanna pick on those parts um, and just work it out and spend time like this. And give yourself a time limit, like 10 minutes, I'm just gonna work on this part, you know? and another 10 minutes I'm only gonna work on this part and or even five minutes to master something and you move and then you can go into sections different sections um, and then pick the section that has the most trouble first always start with what's hardest first because let's be honest we are humans so our attention span is limited you know and if you always start from the beginning guess what the beginning is always gonna be better because by the end you're not gonna have the energy to work on things that need work the end of the piece. So spend your energy, and I would say actually practicing in the morning is really good when you wake up because your mind is clear, 
and you're fresh, your body's fresh, and um, when your body's fresh, actually, you relax more, and you really can feel the feeling of this gravity, gravity thing that I talk about, right? So, um, yeah, so I hope that answers your question, Kevin. Um, oh, G. Ji Hoon Kim, how do you practice octaves? I have rather large hands, but trying to get them in tune is a pain. <laughs> okay, so that takes a little bit of time, right? Octaves are not uh, easy because, it, well, it's also not hard because when it's octaves like that, when it's out of tune, it's just out of tune because you can hear it. So I have a trick for people doing uh, tuning octaves or tuning thirds tuning fourths, any of that, um, double stops, is to use this method. So let me give an example. Let's, let's do this octave, right? Okay, let's just do that much. So I don't know if you noticed what I did. What I did is, first of all, play really slow. Second of all, shift really slow so you can actually hear that shift in between each note. Now, what is the purpose of that? The purpose is so that you know exactly how far you need to go. It teaches your brain and your fingers and your hand how much you need to go for each note, okay? So here. Now, the second thing I'm doing is I'm doing this bow, um, what do you call it? Bow changes like this. I play the first note. I play that note again. And then I shift to the next note. And same thing. You see how I'm adjusting even now? I'm adjusting so that I know how much I need to go to make it in tune. And then when I do it again, my body would have learned. And it keeps learning. Again, the key is doing this thing. The shift really slow so you can hear, really hear how much you have to go in between and also repeating that note again in one bow. So you can do that with thirds, sixths, fifths, anything. Let's see, like uh, this passage. does exactly that it repeats the note before slow shifts you see that's how it is so let's take a couple more questions and then i'm going to make my big announcement oh digital life thank you for your your contribution thank you so much um Oh, Natalie says, I know Paul Katz does Tai Chi to help release tension. Yeah, I do yoga. I do a lot of yoga. Um, does anyone do yoga here? Give me a yes, thumbs up if you do yoga. Yoga is a cellist best friend, absolutely. Um, I'm sure Tai Chi also works, but um, yoga is amazing. Um, hey, Dee is here. Thank you for coming. Um, Let's see, Dee sa said that you mentioned the child is like the human voice and that phrasing should sound like saying. What do you recommend to train our ears to have good phrasing? Oh, that's a good question. What do you recommend to train your ears? So, um, it's really about listening um, and listening to a lot of different recordings um, and listening for... Oh, another thing is it, not just listening to different people playing and how they phrase and kind of learn how it goes. It's also when you're learning a piece of music, literally sing it, literally sing it. If it makes sense with how you sing it, then it makes sense playing it. Because what happens with cellists and any instrumentalist, especially when they are still trying to get comfortable with the instrument, is that they um, basically what happens is they, they let the instrument... Uh, the technicality of the instrument stop them from making good phrasing because they are like stuck with like oh my god my bow has to be like this and my arm has to be like this and I am not in tune so they're thinking about all these technical aspects 
But let it be the opposite. Let the phrasing be the thing that guides you. So sing it first. Really, again, it all goes back to David Sawyer. You know, think back on, sing it and see if it matches what you want to hear in your head. And then try to match your playing to this singing. Okay, so that, that way um, you can really create, you know, it really trains your ears um, D so that you can have good phrasing. And, you know, everybody phrases differently, you know, but I think another good key is always the end of phrasing, you need to breathe. And also the end of phrasing, usually, not always, you kind of fade out. Um, and also depends on the period of the piece, you know, which, uh, whether it's classical, romantic, new music, you know, that also determines it. Okay, let's see what other questions, yoga, yep. Oh, black box. Um, hi, Wendy. Have you any tips on left hand flexibility? I started playing this week and I struggle to get the right space between the second and third finger. Okay, um, flexibility. That's a really good question. Um, okay, here's an exercise that people can do. And this is something that I will talk more about. So um, basically, try to move your fingers like this. <laughs> and then keep shifting and moving around. Now your thumb has to be very, very loose because if you're tensing like this, it's no good, right? So this kind of trains you to be flexible and to not press down. So left hand tension is definitely something I wanna talk more about in the future. So, okay, I think I have answered many questions. I should probably get into um, my uh, big announcement. Okay, let's do that right now. So, um, give me a thumbs up if you're currently a cellist. I'm gonna put down my cello for this so that I can come a little closer and talk about this thing that we're doing, which is really exciting as heck. Um, um, okay, so a lot of cellists here, right? Let me know if you're a cellist and your level, if you haven't already. Cellist and level playing. Cellist and level. Some people are beginner cellists. Yes. Many of you, yeah, thumbs up. Many of you are cellists, great. So I am really, really excited um, because I actually reached out to all of you on Instagram and on YouTube. I, I just had this inspired idea and it was like, this was like really last minute, but a lot of you responded. I said, how do you guys feel if I do a um, cello course? And many of you responded and I was like, all right, maybe we can do it in July or in August or whatever. So I put some dates and I put, I threw in like the last week of um, June to see if you guys would be interested. And it turns out all of you were interested and I got so many, so many responses, I was overwhelmed. And, and then I was like, all right, let's just go for it. Let's do a six day cello mastery course online and it's gonna connect with all of you worldwide. And I'm really, really excited about this program. You guys all voted for the June dates. So I was like, let's go for it. Let's, let's, let's go for the June dates. And, um, and this is really exciting. Um, it's a really exciting opportunity because we're probably gonna do it over Zoom. So, I know that some of you, you know, it's not gonna be like this where you just type a question. No, I'm going to see all of you with the cello and however many of you end up showing up. So I will be able to see you all and tweak any issues that come up and, and address those issues in, in real time, live. So it's gonna be a six day course. It's gonna be two hours each every day. Now, in terms of when exactly that's gonna happen is still to be determined because I'm trying to see who is signing up and from which part of the world and I wanna to try to find a time where it works for most everybody. But in case some of you cannot join live, um, these sessions will all be recorded and um, you can also submit your questions in between days so that you can watch it and still interact live with me along with other participants. And so let's, let's talk about um, what is included. So I'm gonna address um, 
some of these areas. And again, you guys voted for these areas uh, that you're interested in. And a lot of you are interested in exploring vibrato. And so you have to understand every day we're going to focus on one or two things. And I'm going to talk about it the first hour. And then I will give real time live exercises for you to do. Now, I know I've made several videos on YouTube kind of detailing some exercises I do, but this one will go more in depth. So I have, for example, the vibrato day. I have all these exercises to teach you how to do vibrato if you haven't done it. And if you know how to do vibrato, I am going to get a little bit more advanced and talk about like, how do you, how do you listen for the why vibrato? How do you know to do the narrow vibrato? In what situation, what genre, uh, not genre, but like what period of music, like in classical, what kind of vibrato do you do? Like when you play chamber music, how do you deal with the vibrato? Like, so I get very specific. I give you exercises in case you have tension. I'm also going to teach you how to do continuous vibrato. So a lot of people have trouble playing continuously, right? So they stop each note. So then it kind of stops the phrasing. So ooh, it's really hot here in New York. I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> so I'm going to give you exercises to learn how to have continuous vibrato, how wide uh, and how narrow, and basically just um, different vibrato for your toolkit as a cellist. So even if you're just learning how to vibrate or you haven't vibrated, then um, it's, it's um, really good to have this re uh, video for you. So when you do get to the more advanced level, um, that you are able to learn to vibrate. So this is really for everybody. And then of course I will do questions and answers. So that's, that's one thing I'm definitely going to address is vibrato. And next thing I'm going to address is bow control. Okay. So that is something that I talked a little bit about. Oh my goodness. Is it hot in New York? <laughs> uh, bow control. How do you control the bow so that it's always smooth? What about bow changes? Okay. Um, and different bow techniques we're going to explore, maybe how to do spiccato, staccato, uh, uppo staccato, uh, detache, um, when do you use certain bow? Like when do you have longer bow strokes? When do you have shorter bow strokes? Which part of the bow are you supposed to use? Is it the frog? Is it the middle part of your bow? Is it the tip of the bow? All these things, how much pressure do you put in the bow? Which part of the string do you put the bow in? And how do you create a good sound? Um, with different range, whether it's lower sounds or the higher sounds, right? So these are, oh, excuse me, I'm so hot over here. <laughs> so these are all the things we're going to explore, bow technique. And then another is going to be left hand technique. You guys already asked about some of this, you know, how do you deal with tension with the left hand? Okay, and how do you have flexibility? How do you have, how to be more agile in your left hand? So those are really important things to explore and I'll be teaching you that every day. And then of course, there's the big topic of shifting and intonation. Very important. I can teach you how, I, I wanted to turn on air conditioning, but I just don't want it to be loud for the live stream. So I'm just turned everything off, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm gonna finish talking relatively soon and you guys will have an idea of this course so that you know what you're getting into. So I want to talk about intonation. I want to talk about how you shift. It's going to determine how good your intonation is. Okay. So just, um, I have a very specific way that I teach about shifting that almost guarantees, um, perfect, perfect reach. It doesn't matter how far, uh, from here to here, after the course, you will learn to shift in such a way so that you are always accurate, almost without fail, almost without fail. I can almost guarantee you this because I've learned this from my old teacher and it works really well for me. I like throughout my career, one of the things that people always tell me is that I have excellent intonation. Um, and part of it has to do with shifting. Part of it has to do with listening, which we'll talk about in terms of how you deal with intonation. Another thing we're going to explore is sound production. Okay. So how do you create a good sound in cello? I already talked about this a little bit today, right? It's a combination of left and right hand, imagining the sound, uh, and creating that 
sound in your head. Um, so we're gonna get deeper because it's a little bit more complicated than just knowing how it sounds in your head. So we want to listen, explore, and experiment in real a lifetime. And we are going to listen to each other. I'm gonna have some of you play a little bit and then all of us are gonna listen and give some feedback. So, and then uh, two other things I will talk about is tension release uh, with both the left and right hand and also your body, right? And also some practice techniques. How can you be efficient with your practicing? For those of you, I know some of you mentioned that you're preparing for college applications, college auditions. You wanna be on your A game when you're walking into an audition, you wanna be absolutely perfect so we're going to explore a little bit about practice techniques how do you prepare for auditions how can you be on your a game and be your very very best i have studied extensively the how to use your mind to create what you want with your body and that has a lot to do with you know being very uh knowing your mind you know knowing how to use your mind to control your body and that is an art in itself and um, I draw a lot of that from my experience working with a coach when I was at Juilliard who was a sports psychologist actually who was teaching Olympic divers yep how to be on their a game so we're going to talk about how do you like it doesn't even have to be auditions like let's say if you are you want to perform for your friends, you do performances, you want to be on your A game, how do you be on your A game every single time? And that is really, really important um, because you want to play your best, right? You always want to be at your best. So how do you prepare that? So those are some of the topics we'll explore. Again, the format is going to be two hours, time to be determined um, depending on who signs up. And by the way, um, I have a link right here in my um, on YouTube, uh, do I have that link? Yep, it says go to wendylaw.com slash cello dash mastery dash course. So you can go on the link on YouTube. If you're on Instagram, just go to my bio link and go under the cello mastery course, six day cello mastery course, and you can apply right now, right now, uh, because I don't know how many people I can tick. This is sort of last minute. We only have, what, 10 days before the actual mastery course. So I need to make sure who is applying, what level you're playing, what, where you're from, which determines the time, because I want to try to accommodate as many of you as possible. Um, so you can right away apply right now while I talk about the, t the format of this. So the format is gonna be two hours, like I said. The first hour is gonna be talk topic driven. So I'm gonna talk about each of those topics I just talked about and uh, go in depth but like I said I'm going it's going to be completely interactive not like this where people are like asking me questions I answer but even more interactive I'm going to see you live so when I give you the exercises to do certain things I will see if some of you are doing it right or some of you are doing it wrong and I will ask you to make corrections and then I may have some of you play live um, if you're comfortable in front of other students so that we can you know make corrections and give feedback so that you can get better okay so it's really interactive topic driven the second hour is going to be a mass more master class format and some of you who are comfortable with playing it doesn't matter what level you are you can play live for me other students can listen and watch so that they can learn through the process of watching other people and some of the things that they need help with and a lot of times it applies to everybody so that's going to be the second hour and then of course we always will end with a live q a you can ask questions by typing or you know you can do the video with me and we'll answer your questions now another surprise that i haven't officially announced yet and i'm announcing it right now which is that i'm going to have two very very special guests going to be part of this seminar or course um, and they are both amazing cellists, colleagues of mine. The first one, her name is Tahir Wickington, amazing cellist, and she and I went to high school together, we went to college, and then did our masters together at Juilliard. Like, we had like a very similar, similar path, and she's a fantastic and amazing cellist. I put a link to her biography on YouTube if you want to go on YouTube to see uh, in my description. You will see tahirachello.com is where she is. You can check her out. 
um, she's going to be talking with me in one of these days and also making a special performance. So she will perform for you. So this is really a treat because she's an amazing cellist. And the other thing of note is that she has been playing in Hamilton, the, you know, the very, very famous, um, what do you call it? The uh, musical, right? You guys all know Hamilton. I haven't seen it yet, but she plays in it, in the orchestra, so she knows everything about it. So it would be very interesting to find out about what it's like to be a cellist in this amazing and famous musical. So we'll be talking with her. We'll be, um, she'll be also answering your cello questions because she's an absolutely amazing cellist. So I can't wait for you to meet her. And then the other cellist that we're going to have is Ani uh, Kalajian and a colleague of mine. She is a wonderful entrepreneur. She has a concert series that she runs and she's actually also doing another cello class in which I'll be teaching in, in July and I'll tell you more about that later. And she will be doing something very fun. I think it has to do with folk music and you guys will all be involved with the project. So that will be really fun. So we have two special guests, cello guests, cello um, masters who are amazing cellists, amazing um, musicians, and who know everything about cello playing. Um, and you can, besides getting feedback from me, you will be hearing from them, they'll be performing for you, I'll be performing for you as well. So this is going to be a jam-packed six days, filled with activities, filled with interactions. Um, it's going to be really, really fun. So now, the last thing I'm going to tell you is that um, the um, the link here, wendylaw.com slash cello dash mastery slash, not slash, dash, uh, course, okay, again, you can find that link in the down bar on YouTube or on Instagram's link in bio. You can go directly there. I would urge all of you right now to apply because like I said, I don't know how many people I can fit. I will do my very best to fit as many people as possible. All of you, if I can, but it really depends on um, where you are and your level of playing and what you want to get out of it. Um, so uh, go ahead and apply. And once you've applied, I will be contacting you um, and set up maybe a, a live phone call so that we can see if this is the right thing for you. Um, so you can go there, you can see the pricing and if it really feels like it's the right thing, you can go ahead and purchase. But if you want to wait and talk to me first, you can do that. Uh, please note there are two pricing there, actually three. The, um, the standard pricing is $397 for the six-day jam-packed course where you're going to get a lot out of it, obviously. And you can attend all of it live. If not, you can always ask me questions and... Um, maybe and and send me emails um in between sessions so that i can make sure that i answer all your questions um and there's gonna be a recording and video afterwards that you can always watch and always keep with you so that that's something that you can take with you forever the knowledge that is in this course you can um oh, oh yeah so i want to say there's another pricing which is uh 297 that is for students under 21. Students under 21, I want to make this as affordable as possible for everybody. So um, now I know, I know that some of you are saying that even at 297, that is not a price that you can afford. So if that is the case, you're going to have to email me, cello lesson at wendylaw.com, cello lesson at wendylaw.com. Email me personally and tell me. Um, and talk to me and there might be some scholarships available I know that there are some donors um, that is on my patreon that are now offering to donate so that some students that don't have the financial means to take this course can so I'm, I'm gonna be working on this I really want to make this easy and accessible for everybody so let me know what your situation is Three pricing, again, standard 397, 297 for students under 21. If you have serious financial issues, email me and we'll see what we can do. And there's one more where people can also purchase to do the live course and also one additional lesson. Um, 
So uh, you can go online and check that out. Um, I really encourage you to do it because um, I don't know when the next time I'm going to do it. Depends on how many people sign up this time and how it goes. And I, I'm also really excited because I have two wonderful guests that I know you guys are going to love and going to get a lot out of it. Amazing cellists that have a lot to offer. So, um, yeah, I am really excited. And let's see if there's any questions about the course. I will answer them right now. I'll go on Instagram. Any questions about the course? Uh... Let's see. Good luck, Wendy. Thank you. Oh, is your course good for someone who is already taking child lessons from another teacher? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, as long as your teacher is comfortable, um, I don't see any reason why you can't. It's a cello course. It's a group course. It's to enhance your playing. So it's about you know making you a better cellist. What cello teacher doesn't want their students to be even better? Uh, so yeah, it's just six days. So. It's just one period of time. So go ahead and yeah, you can, you can go ahead and sign up or apply. Okay. Okay. Jane says, hello, I'm a beginner. I love this instrument very much and want to learn. I'll try to attend the Zoom classes depending on time of day since I work during the week. Thank you, Wendy. Yep. Like I said, um, I'm going to try to accommodate as many of you as possible, but, um, Yes, you do have to, um, I mean, you do have the, the recordings that you'll be able to keep afterwards, okay? Okay, I'm trying to see if there are any other questions about the course specifically. Any other questions about the course before I hang up because I have 40 seconds on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, Instagram. Which level of playing? That's a really good question. I would say... I would say um, definitely advanced intermediate, advanced beginners for sure. If you're an absolute beginner, um, I, st I still think you enjoy it because you can keep it and then you can learn afterwards. So um, I would say probably advanced beginner at least and onwards. But if you're just a very beginner, I still think you can get a lot out of it because there are performances and there are talks. Um, there's live Q&A. You know, any questions you want to ask, that's going to be your opportunity to ask me for six days straight. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so Instagram ended already, but uh, I'm still here. And I think this is, this is good. I think I've answered a lot of the questions. And yes, um, I look forward to your application, so go ahead and go apply now and i really look forward to seeing all of you this is june 22nd to 27th okay so i will see you guys very soon thank you for joining me and further questions email me cello lesson at wendylaw.com okay bye guys see you very soon and bye